how y'all doing? I know y'all miss my face. I know y'all do. I, I know y'all did. I know y'all did. Well, today is February 11th, Thursday. It's 9.50 in the a.m. Yeah. Thursday, almost the weekend, people. I mean, I think this year is going to fly by fast because we almost in March already. But I hope everybody is having a bless. Well, I'm going to put this video up Friday. So, I hope everybody have a bless. Friday, safe Friday, productive Friday, and overall weekend. I don't know. This weekend, the kids want to go see, uh, what's, the, Shane, what's the name of that picture, that movie we supposed, we going to see Saturday? Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Who? Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what type of weekend we go out. A zombie weekend. So, yeah. Yeah. I just, my hell, y'all. Look, y'all like the colors. I love colors. That's just me. Y'all already know. I put y'all up on that with my little colorama, right? That's me. I just, I like colors. But anyway, I will put my hand to ponytails. It's been, it, it, it's been hibernating for like the last four or five days, so yeah, it's getting some air. It probably I gotta wash it Sunday, but uh yeah, um, today I'm gonna do a fact about myself. This the third one I've been under here, huh? Okay, all right. I'm staying kind of consistent, I guess. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> so this video won't be extra extra long. Yeah. Girls, y'all want to come say hey to the peeps? T. Hola. She ain't saying hey to the peeps. I did out here. I'm saying. I did out here. Just French braided to the back. Cornrows, as she call them. Mm -hmm. And then she want to take them down, but it's cold. Mm -hmm. So. And Cara did her rings and bantu knives. If she want to take it down, she could take it down. But they're going to have hats on anyway. And today, man, let me show y'all the weather before I get started on my fact about myself. Look at that, y'all. Thursday 20. Cold. Y'all see that? Cold. Cold. Friday, snow. Saturday, cold. Y'all see that low? Zero, one below, 13 tonight. I will be currently taking donations for those that do, do not live in Chicago. Just got a chance to see the Chicago weather. Um, it's supposed to, um, I don't, I don't even know what to call that. Warm back up, 33, I don't know, compared to 13, I guess. I don't know. But anyway. Okay, I'm back, peeps. Had to change locations again. I think this probably will be my fun, my fact about my sub background. Yeah, my bedroom, y'all. Anyways. Okay. Give y'all a little summary of my life with this fact. My mom had three kids. I'm the oldest. I was born first. And then my brother Lloyd, uh, four years older than him. Then I had another brother. I got another brother. I'm nine years older than him. So, yeah. So all together, there's three of us. For those that have hard time adding like I do with numbers, yeah. I'm going to keep it real. Mm -hmm. I still use the fingers. Hey, when my kids do math, we got to pull it. They want to do calculate. I'm going to know scrap sheet. Scrap, scrap sheet, scrap sheet. Yeah. <laughs> scrap sheet. Show your work. Show your work. <laughs> like, hey, this old lady need to go somewhere and, and get upgraded. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> the graphic calculator, no. <laughs> We don't know how to work those. <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah. Me and my brother, Lloyd, we was really close because it was the two of us for a long time. Like I say, before my mom had her third child, and nine years had went past, and him and my brother was five years apart. So it was just me and him for a long time, just the two of us. And we had, we was really close and everything, so, yeah. Let me get straight to it. Um. What year was that? I know I was pregnant with my last child, Rena, Sharina. She was born in 2003 in August. And my brother, Lloyd, the one that's next to me, I'm four, year, four years older than him now. So he passed the same year that my brother passed. I mean, he passed the same year my daughter was born. He passed April 19th, 2003. And the thing about that was I was watching the news that night and they were saying on the news that like three people had got killed on like this street that I know he hang out on. But at the time, I thought he was in Rockford, Illinois, but, and the strangest part even about that is that, like, that early morning, I had a dream. I have dreams, y'all. Yeah, I have visions. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. I've been having them for a long time. I see things, people. I see dead people. <laughs> For real, I do though. But anyways, he came to me and it wasn't even really like a dream. I think it was more of a vision type of thing. And he stood in my dining my, my, my dad room. And what he told me was kind of like, kind of weird, but I don't know. And I had a back, I had these two back doors where I was staying at. And uh, last time I had saw him, he went out those two back doors. And so the hubby came in that morning. Hey, yeah, the hubby came in that morning. And he was like, Sharon, you left the back door open? I was like, no. He said it was open. The same door he went out of, which had been probably maybe about a week or two before. And I know we had locked it. I don't know. It was really weird because that's the same door he left. The let he left out the last time I saw him. And um, my nose be running, y'all, man. And um, and I was like, that's said, babe. That's kind of strange because I just had a dream about Lord. I just saw him. He was like, yeah. I said, yeah, he told me that uh, to move from where I'm staying at because the people that killed him live around here. I was like, and at that time, I didn't even know he was dead, you know. And so my mom came because that was like seven something in the morning. And my mom came like around nine o'clock that morning. And I I wasn't really talking to her at the time. <laughs> so she just showed up and she was like, Well, I just came over here after I opened the door and let her in. Huh, my uh stepdad said, Well, I just came over here to let you know your brother was killed last night. Uh, over the weekend, because that was a Monday. I think he passed that Saturday, a Friday night, Saturday morning. And I was, and I just paused, right? And I was like, wow, wow, y'all. And I just like, I just broke, right? Because I'm like, man, that was deep. And I just, and I came the way my front was, it was like an enclosed porch. 
So um, hubby was still in the inside. So when I came in the inside into the house, I was like, babe, Lloyd passed last, uh, over the weekend. She said, it was on the news and everything. And I know I was watching the news and they said three people had got killed on this street that he hang out on. But I thought he was in Rockford because that's the last place. When I saw him last, that's where he told me he was going to Rockford. I'm like, okay. You know, so. And I was like, man, babe, I just had a dream. I just saw him. I just, he just came to me. You know, I just seen him. So, I took it kind of hard because he passed that April of 2003. He had just got out of jail like in December of 2002. And he stayed at my house with me for like, till his parole officer came out to see him or whatever. He stayed with me. And that was our, that was my first time like st like spending time with him like that in a long time. I mean, cause he it took his parole officer like three or four days to come and come before he could leave the house. And during that time, we played chess <laughs> and we watched karate movies. Cause he always used to think he was Bruce Lee. I used to think I was Bruce Lee. We'd be up in there doing karate on each other. Whoa, cha -cha -cha. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we sat up and watched a couple of karate pitches together. We watched, we played a couple of games and everything. And I, I didn't know know what's gonna happen. So finally, the lady parole officer came through and he was like, "Sharon, Sharon, I'm out now." You like, like, like you free as a bird, right? So that was like, like I said, maybe at the end of December. I was kind of seeing them off and on January and February and stuff. I said, Let's, I seen them in February. He was like, yeah. He was talking to me. I mean, he was telling me some things about his self, his life. I felt like they was con his last con his confessions or something. And everything calls. I was like, whoa. Should you be telling me these things? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the, what does he want? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling this to me? So when I look back on, I really think that's what he was. Like I just feel like that was his last rites, his confessions. You know, like the Bible say, confess your sins to one another. I really feel like that's what he was doing. So I know I think that was right before Valentine's Day of two thousand and three. So yeah. So I say from December, January, February, March, April, four months later, he was dead. And like I said, that was my first time he came to stay with me. And we spent that time. So I think God gave me that, y'all. I think he he knew. He knew what was going to happen to my brother. Because I had been having dreams that stuff was going to happen to him. Because I had called the one time before he even. It was like maybe a year prior to that. That. I just felt death was over on him. Death was on him and everything. So I wrote him a long letter while he was in jail and everything and stuff and everything. So I don't know. Did he make peace with God or not? I don't know. But um, yeah, I, 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 it don't bother me as much as it used to. But when it first happened, Everything just reminded me of him and everything. It's been, it's, it's, it's something because the same year that he passed, I hit Arena, like April, May, June, July, August, four months later. And when they say one go out, another one come in, I believe that's what happened. I really believe. Yeah. So, yeah. I could talk about it and not get teared up and stuff like that, but uh, I got my memories, and that was my boy right there. I mean, we used to sit up and drink together. <laughs> I mean, man, <laughs> yeah, 
I'm a mess. But yeah, that's a fact about me. I lost my brother. Rena gonna be 13 years old, 13 years ago. I mean, years, we say it in numbers, but it sounds like a long time, but the way it feel like it was just, just not too long ago. It don't feel like 13 years. I don't know what 13 years feel like, but it don't seem like it been that long ago. So yeah. Lost my dad, <laughs> lost my brother, but I have a baby, my uh, my other brother that I'm nine years older. He got shot in the head before, y'all. I mean, Chicago is rough. Like I say, the, these streets going to make you or break you, especially as being, especially as being a black man. And my, my son, Sean. Because I knew the lifestyle my brother was living and everything. Hey, people used to say he thought he was Nino Brown, right? So that's the type of lifestyle he was living. But nevertheless, a loss is a loss, right? So my son, you know, he started, you know, you try to protect your kids. Because I know what my family about. And since I'm my brother. I mean, a lot of males in my family, you know? So I, I don't want my son to go down that path. But, you know, because my brother, he was in and out of jail, in and out of jail all the time. He got shot before in the butt and everything. And everything. How he got killed, uh, it's deep. I can't even go into details about it because it was it was pretty big. But he got shot twice. He got shot in the head once, and then he got shot in his chest. And it was up close, so yeah. It was like that and everything, and it was, it was deep. It was deep, y'all. And so I used to have these concerns for my son and everything. Like, you know, I throw it up. You know my brother was this, and you know that, and woo-woo-woo. I want you to go to school. I want you to do something with yourself. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, only God knows, right? Now, I made to get teary at when it came to my brother because it is what it is. But my son, but he... 23, be 24. He been going back and forth to jail. It's just, I see so many similarities to it's scary. But people, all I can do is pray. I pray for my brother. God knows what's best. I pray for my son. I tried to, I told him. I told him. I got truth in his face. And that's all I can do. You know, the rest is his decisions and his choices. And everything. And he's been going back and forth to jail since 15 years old. I haven't been shot at, I don't think. I ain't, I ain't heard nothing about that one. But I'm believing in God. That the seeds that he laid in me to plant it to my son, they gonna grow, and I believe he gonna make it. <laughs> I have to, you know, when you got your daddy, my daddy, he died living in that type of lifestyle. He was twenty one, I think I was telling y'all twenty one, twenty one or twenty one or twenty one, doing the same thing. My brother. Son, come on, man. I, I ban those generational spirits in the name of Jesus. I come up against them, y'all. I for real. And fast and pray. So sometimes I feel with him being in jail is a blessing. Because <laughs> he's still alive. My brother didn't do too much jail. He didn't stand there long. He always would go, but he always would get out. But... Then God sent my son down for a reason. I just see him spending a lot. Of, he, he just been spending his teens and his 20s sitting still. <sighs> yeah. So, 
that's a fact about me, y'all. That's another fact. I hope it ain't, like, depressing, but these are the things that I'm not really the type to talk about my stuff. Things that really hit me like that. I share a lot of things with my husband. Because <clears throat> I'm not that type of person that just... Excuse me. I'm not that type of person that just... Just open up like that. Especially when it's... Um, heartfelt issues and stuff. Because I take stuff really to heart. And everything. And I it's just... I really don't talk about stuff too much. Once I kind of deal with it and God kind of gave me some kind of comfort and peace about it, I just kind of keep it moving. But every now and again, it'll come up, you know, not as much as it used to, even with my brother or my son, because it is what it is now, you know. I've been going through this with my son for years, so God done strengthened my heart. I got peace. You know, and everything, and whatever God's will is going to be done. And I trust His will. I have to. When you got nine children, you have to. <laughs> I, I don't have a choice because <laughs> if not, I would go crazy. I mean, I'd be sitting around here like clump on a log, you know, and I'm not going to live my life like that. I don't feel I was born to live like that. You know, he said he ain't going to put too much on me I can't handle. So, obviously, if he allowed me to come in my life, I can handle it. I just got to go somewhere and pull that strength out. I got to, I got to, I got to get there, y'all. And for the most part, I don't got there. Now, people be like, I don't worry. I don't worry like that no more. I don't lose no sleep. I'm like, I seriously, I pray about everything. Because that's how I've been trained and disciplined now. So it's automatic with me. The first thing, some I hear some bad news, and I can't do nothing. I ain't Jesus. I can't save nobody. I can't none of that. But I know who can. That's who I go to. I'm like, okay, Lord, what? <laughs> what are we doing now? What, 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 what? <laughs> so, yeah. And I go to him, and I leave it with him. And I just, hey, it's yours. One thing when I watch Roots... I, uh, what I took from that, took the heart from that, is when Kunta Kente hold Kizzy up, and he said his little sayings. I don't know if y'all seen it. Sorry about that, but I might edit that out. But I, um, he hold Kizzy up to the to the sky, and he just said his little African thing, right? Y'all know I did that with each last one. Y'all know I did that with every last one of my kids, right? But my thing was, from my first child, Sharita, down to my last child, Sharina. I said, you give them to me. I held them up butt naked. I give them back to you. And I did that. Because <laughs> that was just something that I took from, from that movie and whatever it is, one of my kids, I did that. So yeah, it's 10, 18. I gotta hit these streets of Chicago. I got to hit this Hulk out here is waiting for me. Like, yeah, you been hibernating for like a week, but I'm waiting on you, sister. You ain't getting away from me unless you stay in that house the whole winter. <laughs> and I can't do that. <laughs> If I could, nah, I be needing some air, y'all. I be needing to get some air. I, I, mean, I need the fresh, fresh air every day out again. Be sitting up in this house. I'm cool with being in the house now. Because I done ramp around them streets, boy. I'm telling you, I done left some footprints on the west side, south side. I have been there. So, I'm cool. But when I got to go take care of business, I got to go take care of business. So, on that note, people, I hope y'all enjoy my fact about myself. And I'm out. And I'm going to go uh, do what I do. <laughs> do what I do. And on that note, peace and love. Share a song. And I'll see y'all in my next video. Hello.